Today is episode six of Cads to Cars, and we are here in Mike Day's garage. Cats. It's only cat, one cat. Cat, whatever, fine. Okay. <laughs> Today. I suppose it could be computer aided designs. Systems. <laughs> okay. For anybody uh, who doesn't know what that stands for, that's that's it. Yeah. Computer aided design. Right. Hey, not everybody knows that. That's so. true. That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm. So today is episode six of Cat to Cars, and we're in Mike Day's garage, and we're going to talk about um, a few things here. Uh, eventually, we'll get into the fabrication part of it, uh, which will be our main point of discussion today. But uh, I just wanted to run through with these guys. My name is Dave. I am the Volkswagen Audi brand marketing coordinator. Uh, I am stepping in for Matt, um, Hi, and Dave. I will probably hey guys. Hi, uh, I will probably be here for the remainder of the podcast. Um, Dave just so yeah. had, or, uh, Matt just had more important things to do than hang out with us, I guess. I guess, yeah, apparently. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's fine. Just got to keep everything rolling. Um, but but Dave's a familiar face. I mean, Dave's been uh, participating in some of our previous antics. I would uh, say oh, yes. shenanigans. Or, uh, yeah, shenanigans, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, trips on the uh, tail, tail of the Dragon. No, not that one. No, yeah. uh, uh, Michigan. Michigan. Snow drift, That's yep. right. Snow Michigan. Drift in Michigan. Twice. Um, twice. It was the support vehicle for the Winter Beater Michigan trip. Support, yeah. Yeah. support vehicle. <laughs> I don't know how I count that one into that, but that worked out great because you were able to like run up with, you know, cool Steve there and get yeah. shots. But uh, yeah, so uh, I guess my only question is for you guys right now: What are you working on since quarantine is happening and everyone's kind of just been hanging out at home, not doing, you know, normal stuff? Um, so I'm doing exactly normal stuff. Okay. Well, kind of <laughs> normal Nothing stuff. has changed. Where, well, for, last time we were here, I was poking around at the E34. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the LS swap on that. Right. And a turbo setup. And I have not touched it since because I have to buy some things and I get easily distracted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have since purchased a Honda Helix and then gone through the whole snowball of modifying that. We're yeah, getting looks, close uh, to the looks gang. Pretty, it looks getting pretty pre- good. Yeah, uh, it's pretty good. You're going to have to take it for a rip. And then... What was the other thing? I fixed, got the fixed a bunch of junk. Kickspand on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made the little foot. I cut that out on the bandsaw. That's almost as good as a footprint gas pedal. I know. Almost <laughs> as good. I'm hoping it can sink into pavement and leave little footprints places. <laughs> <laughs> and not roll it over. Not roll it over. Hurt yourself. And then, yeah, I also bought a trials bike, so I've always wanted to get into that. I rode it once at Kevin's and essentially blew it up. So now it's in... <laughs> Uh, Ten billion it was pieces. Predispo- it was a pre uh, pre existing condition, and I, I you know, I think I actually caused the entirety of it. So to fill everyone in, it's you know a two stroke trials bike. It's water cooled. At Kevin's, it started overheating. So you're like, oh, that's weird. So I played with coolant stuff. Didn't seem like it was circulating. And then, you know, kind of gave up on it that day. Brought it home, pulled the cover off, and the little water pump gear wasn't there. It's a little plastic gear that's supposed to drive it. Yep. and it's just missing which they're not known to fail I was like ah the bearing's a little wobbly maybe it kind of like was able to get some side load or something and then before you know it I've got the whole thing torn down to nothing the engine cases are rotten because they're magnesium so I have replacement cases coming and it, it needs a clutch and all sorts of other stuff but that day I was changing the transmission oil because the clutch was dragging <laughs> and I have little red bottles I use like one for ATF oh, yeah. and one for acetone. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. squeezy, and squeezy bottles? Squeezy bottles. Yeah. And I was filling it with ATF, which is fine, but I was on the phone with my buddy, and then I accidentally <laughs> oh, no. filled my acetone one <laughs> with ATF. <laughs> like, so it was half and half ATF acetone. Oh, yeah, for the, and, that's the ultimate um, uh, penetrating oil. Yeah, yeah, which works great, but yeah, that was yeah. not my intent. Mm-hmm. And a nylon gear does not like acetone. So. Okay. Now that I had this half and half ATF acetone oh concoction that I was riding around at your house, I think I entirely am responsible for the failure of that gear. Oh. And I didn't realize that until yeah. I was trying to, I had it all torn down, I was trying to clean some stuff, I grabbed the acetone bottle and ATF came out. This makes a lot like, of sense. Oh no. <laughs> this that, is that all makes my a, fault. That makes a ton of sense. And I actually had a similar issue happen when I was rebuilding, I forget, it was somebody else's carb. 
for one of the tiny things, and I put it in the um, ultrasonic cleaner mm -hmm. with some concoction of like degreaser and just stuff that I had. I was like, I'll just mi mix all of the best things, the and best it completely it. melted all the plastics. Like <laughs> it, like it basically dissolved them, like the uh, plastic choke. Yeah. Uh, everything gone. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So <laughs> whoops. So, but I have realized a lot of issues with it. It'll be a lot better once it's back together. But I'm gonna be into it damn near twice as much. So that's cool. But that's basically all I've been doing. So ba breaking things that weren't necessarily broken before. And Buying semi-broken <laughs> stuff, trying to fix it, breaking it more. And yeah, things that you... Typical snowball. It's yeah. really yeah. no different no, than yeah. me any other Things time. that are now getting in the way of what you normally would be doing on E34. Right. Right, <laughs> which we'll get to. You find a deal point. on Facebook Marketplace and... You gotta do it. Can't oh, believe it me, you no. guys got me on... Like, every time I get a paycheck, every other, every other Friday, I'm like, what can I buy on Facebook Marketplace that I absolutely don't need yeah. that What's has a motor? the thing for the least price? Well, I found a drift trike, like, a few weeks ago, and I almost pulled oh, the trigger on it, and I was like, I should cool. probably pay my credit card bills off Yeah, first. except for I want one of, like, the electric ones or something Well, it like was, that, like, it had, like, a whatever... to go up the hill. Whatever sucks. Honda, yeah. um... Whatever, like little CC motor that you could get yeah. pretty much anywhere, and it was like, I mean, it was like extended and all that other nonsense. But I was like, I'm gonna wait. Buy something. Only, I only say electric because I know that obviously fuel works well. Also, right. but I've also wanted to make an electric thing, and yeah, that would be that would be a good one. Yeah. So, I've been tempted to do the electric motorcycle thing or the electric. Get dirt some of the like some super mini lithium batteries that yeah. just rip. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I know a lot of people, Explosion like, I, risk. I've yeah, seen it great. on, a lot of people are using those Milwaukee batteries to, yeah. oh, to yeah. power their, uh, like, kids' power Oh, I've seen the conversions yeah. for the uh, little kids' Barbie Jeeps and things yep. like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I've seen a couple good. guys that, like, kill drills and they cut the thing off so they can use the battery part. Oh, yeah, you just <laughs> yeah. just use the bracket and just yeah. mount it. Seems like in. a great idea. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have it, why not? Faster charger, plenty of batteries. Right. I mean, the only problem with that is the batteries can be kind of expensive, like, I mean, if you're the they, they can them. justify for you to use oh, yeah. around the shop. Or right. If you have an actual one, you're like, I bought a new one. I'll just give this one to my kids. They can put it in his power wheel so he can rip donuts in the driveway. Honey, I bought it for the kids. Right, exactly. <laughs> There's your excuse. There you go. Anyway. Kevin, uh, you've made some progress on the pole barn and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much my main project still. We did blow-in ceiling insulation the other weekend yeah, with a that? scissor truss um, ceiling construction. So basically I had like three feet with some really pointy metal bits holding all the trusses together and I had to crawl all the way in from one end of the barn with the side panels removed to be able to blow insulation in um, not that expensive pretty easy to use but yeah. the first machine I got was dead on arrival so I had to go get another one it's just one of those projects that took all day because yeah. did you buy the machine or did you run it or no, what it comes free you buy a certain amount whatever oh okay um, but with the virus stuff going on, Home Depot is a mess on the weekends. So yeah, I was I was it there took last me about Saturday. two hours just to buy the supplies I needed. Yeah, and I only needed those supplies, so yeah, struggle there. Yeah, I was in there. I went there the other day to buy stuff for Mother's Day, and uh, there was like a line out the door, and I was like, Mom's not getting flowers this time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. She's not getting a hanging pot or not, anything. Not a good time. No. Anyway, uh, um, but, also I decided to build a sim rig so I can drive drift events without going to drift events because so far we've been pretty well screwed out of everything that's was supposed to happen yeah, at this yep. point so i figured by the time winter comes around i'll want it again and you know once we start i think, I think june 7th is the first event so it's mm -hmm. yeah, a few weeks away first one that seemed yeah. reasonable that's, that on, might that's actually a sunday happen. right isn't that the first events uh where at that'll be in midvale okay way of club loose so Okay. We'll see if it happens. I don't know. But well, I know that now, we have we have cars and coffee scheduled for June sixth currently. Really? Okay. So oh, really? Uh, nice. yeah, uh, Jack and I have been talking to Jason Kennedy, uh, just trying to get that set in place. Um, so it's a good to go for now. Um, depending on what Governor DeWine says, it may or may not happen. Yeah. Um, I yeah, would they're doing like the no contact style event. Yeah. It seems to be on on track for that. So. Yeah, I, re I really think that this week, since today's the fifteenth, and they kind of half reopened like a lot of the stuff. I think this next week or so is going to be the deciding factor on whether or not. Yep. Uh, it could go really well or it could yeah, go really bad. But yeah. We'll so. see. Either way. I, I mean, we all have high hopes, and we all want to get back to doing the car stuff and yeah. other nonsense sure. things and outdoor activities and whatnot. So. I miss driving things. So. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too. Like, been working on so much stuff, and I've, everything's been like staying apart because I don't even drive to work anymore. So right, I literally yeah. just don't drive anything anywhere. Just well, everything. Right. Yeah. Yes. 
until further notice, I guess. Well, that's I mean, I've, I've been the same way. I haven't left the house. I've been working from home, so like I've just been working on the Corrado, and that's just, right. you know, replace everything that doesn't need replaced anyways mm-hmm. because it's like know, extended winter. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Except for warm, <laughs> right. so, which is nice. Warm, and I can wear shorts. Yeah. And I'm, you know, We're not. Getting there. What? We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first day it's been over 60 in a while. Well, it's real humid today, too, which is like, helps, but... So what are you working on, with? <laughs> yeah, how's your collection of projects coming? My problem is, uh, and we discussed this, is it's probably going to be a future topic, but, um, you know, a, a lot of different things. Everything needs something right now, and, uh, you know, as soon as I get kind of either just tired of working on something because it's not fun and it's just a mess and you know maintenance Mm -hmm. i immediately want to like switch to something else or i reach a point where i need to spend a bunch of money and then switch to something else so yeah well um, so uh i heard this earlier (laughs) you bought something else than you did i didn't really buy but you procured you acquired you have acquired acquired. yeah so i was uh trying to get rid of uh my mazda speed six uh in order to buy a truck to be able to you know tow things around transport tiny things uh you know to brapple bees um you know one on one for a while and i decided like you know i'm, I'm kind of done with this car i don't really want to mess with it anymore uh so i decided to sell it problem was is i put a bigger turbo on it and i hadn't you know officially tuned it yet i was in the process of tuning it myself because mm-hmm. why not i like to learn how to use like different types of tuning software and that right. was the typical um uh, method on those is to use Cobb. Like there's there's really one only one other form of software for that. So I figured oh, I've never used Cobb on anything before. I'm going to try this out, and that had issues, and I was kind of getting tired of it. And realistically, I wasn't interested in the car anymore. I yeah. just didn't really have the motivation to do it. And so I finally decided to list it for sale. So I listed it as it was. Said it was on a good base map, like it was drivable. You could drive it. Right. Yeah. You, know, hours you were driving, to, you were no driving it to work to and from work just, there. You know. Don't watt everywhere right. uh, but anyway so i listed it and um didn't really have many bites at my asking price so i decided you know what i'm just gonna pay one of like the reputable tuners to tune this thing and then hopefully that'll help get it sold right so in the process of doing that and you know um, at no fault whatsoever to the tuner because there were some mechanical problems i seem to have damaged uh one of the pistons i think it's a ring land issue or Oops. something along those lines so um you know, of course, took it off Facebook Marketplace and everything everywhere it was listed, and right. uh, I'm in the process of fixing that now too. Which is like, you know, like I said, I was not interested in the car anymore. I just wanted to get it sold, and that's like the worst possible thing. Like that is the worst. I yeah. do not want to do this at all, right. and I know that all the time and whatever money I continue to invest in this thing, I'm not getting back out of that. I know that, and so um, a good buddy of mine actually uh, kind of hooked it up a little bit. Um, you know, I've, I've helped him out with a few things in the past. A little bit? And a, lot, a lot of it. A lot of it. <laughs> um, and so I knew he was replacing one of the motors in one of his Mazda Speed 6s with, like, a fresh built, like, ready to rip. Like, he's shooting for, like, a bunch of power, seven, 800 horsepower, something like that. Yeah. And so he, he had a built motor in his. It was pretty – I mean, it has a bunch of miles on it, but it was in decent shape. And then I clicked one day. I was like, hey, what are you doing with your old one? And, you know, I'm like, you know, if you're thinking about if you're going to sell it or whatever, when your new motor's ready, like, let me know. I'm in the market now. So uh, we talked about it for a little bit, and he ended up just giving me the whole car in exchange for (laughs) some labor. So, uh, and by some labor, I mean I'm swapping, I'm like going to be swapping in his new motor and everything and all the turbo bits and everything for him uh, rather than have him, you know, pay another shop and everything. So So, I think it's a win-win, but... Um, now I have two of the cars so that I was trying to get rid of. <laughs> you've acquired not only a second problem, but also a solution in, in that. It as is well. a solution for me, and it you know it's less money out of my pocket, so it makes me feel a little bit better about unloading one of them. Right, but now I'm interested in also keeping one of them because I got it for a deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, you know, Mike has been talking about trying to do stage rally stuff with the 944 and i want to do stage rally stuff with I feel my like friends that would be a good so race car to use i'm like that. well you know if i could blast together the motor that's hurt right now yeah because it's not that hurt i think i caught it real early if i can put that together on the cheap and then just like run it as like a relatively stock car mm-hmm. i would love to do that because the body's kind of whooped but the chassis itself is pretty clean like yeah. there's not really any rust on it it's better than the other one that i was selling so 
uh, uh, the the cogs are turning now. Yeah, here so, we go. Yeah, you just made your have entire a issue rally card here, significantly more. It's complicated. so much more complicated now. There's so many options, and I'm having a hard time, like, sifting through it. So, yeah. but stage that's, rally. That's like yeah, stage rally. I so. mean, that's that's a plus always. Yeah, there's no downsides there. Right. right. Yeah. Except the cost. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Everything expensive. Funds expensive. And I mean, truck. realistically, it's going to be SACA rally cross stuff to start with because that's cheap and. Yeah. And you don't have to have a truck and trailer expensive. set up to get there. And right. well, I'm still planning on having that, though, because now that I have two, I can still sell the one and procure the truck. Um, I just don't have any space. So yeah, that's quite the plan. Yeah. And that's just one of the projects. I'm not even talking. We haven't even, like, touched on any of the other stuff that I'm, like, in the middle of. But, yeah, this is just the largest elephant that's in the, the room the right biggest now. and most unexpected of the issues. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, of course, like, you know, the Honda Helix has been getting some love the last couple of weeks, just like itching to ride it. But it's been like either relatively cold and or rainy and um, or snowing and, and or, or yeah, hot who knows? And or Ohio um, weather all over the place. Who knows? So I've been messing with that. Speaking of which, I did get the new little uh, buy starter, little thermal oh. buy starter thing in and uh, out of the box, just for reference, that measured five ohms. Um, and the old one that I replaced was at 10 ohms. So. That's the. <laughs> those are different numbers. <laughs> Startup enrichment. Yeah, it's like an control. electric choke type of thing, but mm -hmm. it's not really a choke. It's like a, you know. It's actually the opposite of thing. every choke. It does the inverse. Yeah, yeah. it's more yep. fuel instead of takes air away. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so. like a, you know, a carb that has a dribbler. Like, mm -hmm. a, you know, older stuff or yeah. that BMW bike I have. It's got, like, just a port that. Mine's just a, a rod that you push on that holds the float down so it can't. So okay. it floods the carb. Yeah. And that's how that's how you start the thing. It's just like floods it until gas comes out of the carb externally. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's enough. And then yeah. you kick it over and somehow it fires up every time. Yeah. So magic of carburetors. It's a dude, that's yeah, a lot of the carburetor things going on right now too, because I've been working on the XR eighty trying to get that weird it's having an issue starting and I can't quite figure that out yet either. Um, so that probably needs to come apart again. And uh, I don't know. The list goes on. But point is, you know, just dabbling in everything these days it's just really hard to manage uh different projects and this is kind of what yeah. i mentioned before is that we're probably going to have to dedicate a whole episode to like you know talking about all these different projects and how and if you should be like juggling them and really working on a million things at the same time because uh, right. i mean it's not I, for everybody but it's definitely, no, it's not, definitely for everybody, not for everybody and there's pros and cons to it for me i prefer that but yeah we should definitely do another episode yeah. designated to that you know, say so and drop us a line and whatever you can and see if you're interested in that type of thing. Cause right. That's what we're doing all the time, and it can be a real hot mess or it can go very well. Yep. But it, it comes in waves. There's always good intentions, but yeah. it doesn't always work out. No, so. it does not. Of course it doesn't. <laughs> never, it never does. You fix one thing and you break three other things, you're like, dang it. Every time. But, uh,. Since we're we're here, uh, I guess we should start talking about fabrication and whatnot because I have a lot of questions. Not being someone this that's is well versed, well versed <laughs> in, in actually fabricating, I'm interested in it, but I don't. I mean, where would I start? All right. So, so my biggest question: What matters more, the equipment that you're ha using for fabrication, right? The quality of the equipment, or the time and effort you put into it? Uh, time and effort over the quality of the equipment, up until. Like, the quality of the equipment becomes a big deal if you're spending, like, a ton of time doing it. Right. And that's where it starts to bite you. So, but. so if you're going to, say for someone like me, if I wanted to start fabricating stuff, right, what what are the essential tools that you would need? You can't. Yeah. You can't hear. I mean, I yes, say, we have a lawnmower like, oh, going a lawnmower. in the background. Yeah, uh, uh, and someone's mowing the lawn on my street. Like, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, they can't hear it. It's fine. So, so for beginner stuff for fabrication what type of equipment do you guys recommend right so like obviously welding uh like drill presses stuff like that like you can do the majority of what you need to do with like three tools this is how efficient you well, are at it i think really. for there's a the very i think definite progression in terms of the the fabrication process and people that are willing and able to do that kind of work on cars and it starts off small i think I mean, having a drill and some metal laying around and things like that, you like, just start whipping up like brackets and yeah. things like well, that. I think it was like a, a drill, hand drill. You can do a lot with a hand drill. Yeah. Is you know how careful you are marking stuff out and laying things out. Mm -hmm. Like if you take your time and 
really measure everything well or scribe it into where you're trying to mm -hmm. do things and center punch everything, you can make really nice stuff that you honestly can't tell the difference of. It does take a little longer. Yeah. Um, an angle grinder yeah. so that you can oh, actually yeah. cut and, you know, grind. I would, on that note, I would say have two. Oh, not, that's that's the game changer. Oh is my god! Just one is the worst that, thing on earth. Because changing discs like, finally happens yeah. for me. So yesterday. we uh, <laughs> the yeah. the most recent experience I had, uh, my buddy and I, uh, he had some holes on his E30 that we were fixing. We had fixed over the winter, and that was uh, about the gist of it. But I mean, obviously cutting and welding in and filling and mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. And that's kind of like I want to get into it more, but so that's the most recent experience i have with it and for the most part it's it's a lot of measuring and a lot of recutting is I mean, what i've what i have three noticed. tools i'd agree with you hand drill grinder angle grinder or two and two. a mig welder and yeah you just do yourself a favor you buy two have the cutoff wheel have the flap disc one on each yeah. wire yeah. wheel you don't need it forget about grinding it. discs like the you know the thick Oh, the grinding oh, actual blades. grinding disc cutoff. Unless resistor. you're doing yeah. stuff that's like inch thick, no. you don't need Throw a grinding out. disc. Throw, yeah. Throw those away. They make your hands numb, and you get a they really crappy finish. Cut. Like well, they I, don't do I, anything. I, I thought you had made an argument at some point that the the grinding wheel was better than the flap disc. Me? Yeah. Well, not that uh -oh. I know. Of. It certainly is a conversation. No, I don't. Because yeah, must have been someone else. I, I feel that, like that I didn't make sense to me at all. Very riled up about that. Flap discs and cutting wheels are the essential too. Right. Bring up a great point. It's like. You, the most important thing is like spend time on the fitment of your part because right, like, yeah. you can totally cut a corner and that's where you see really crappy stuff done yeah. is like you can totally lay something up that fits poorly and spend forever trying to weld it which is way harder mm -hmm. makes the weld look way crappier and you're just giving yourself an overall bad time but I mean, you, you don't have to be talking about welding because I mean I feel like that's we're, we're going to get there but you know you know, whether or not you're bolting together or riveting together stuff, like, right. just yeah, spending so, so, time so creeping through, up on profiles and, like, just you know, try to maintain like, patience. Yeah. Each one of you, run me through, like, what what your favorite style of fabricating is, whether it's welding or Like riveting. a favorite, like, thing to make or... No, just, just in general, like, what your favorite, like, what your best skill set is, like, what you like to do the most out of everything... You know, whether it's... It depends on what... There's so many different things that you can do with fabrication. Like, nobody really likes replacing floorboards. Oh, rusty yeah. rusty no panels, wants to do the stuff like, Nobody wants are. to do that. Yeah, yeah bottom of the barrel. Yeah. No matter what. But pretty much anything else is kind of fair game. Whether yeah. it's, you know, turning something on a lathe or welding up a new... Like, I built that sim rig out of lunch right. square stock. So I was like, oh, a nice little welding project. You know, bust out the, the TIG and get some time on that. Um, but totally depends on what you're doing because it's also interesting making things work like you know, I had to put an intercooler set up on E36 when we had the supercharger so I had to make a bracket for that whatever I had to recharge pipes so I, don't, I wouldn't say there's any preference of one type of fabrication right another, so like once you do one you kind of like you delve into like the rest of them eventually yeah, that's kind of where I was going with talking about like the progression of like the fabricate. You need like to because start... I feel like once you're comfortable with it, right? Like you're you, you, once you do one thing, you're kind of like, well, maybe I'll try this other you, thing yeah, too. Yeah, you need to kind of start small to build up like the confidence because yeah. right. people can do so much more than right. what they think they can do with very limited tools. Like yeah. you don't need press brakes to make like fancy sheet metal like brackets or right, exactly. or, or boxes and things like that. You can do that stuff with a hammer and an anchor, or a bench vice and things like that. Right. Yeah. So you I mean, take your time and like figure it out and don't. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of time like you and effort. can get some nice quality stuff done with basic things. Yeah. yeah. It will be slightly more difficult, but you kind of learn more on lower. You learn more on the way too. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, finding ways to to build stuff out of what you have versus yeah. just going to buy like the tool that specifically does that one right. job, right. like a cheat metal. Or just buying brand. stuff that's already like kind of pre-made that you just gotta tack together mm -hmm. or something. Really like that. don't it's like not, that. I right. always look at the price of something and like look at some pictures and be like. Nah, that's yeah, how I think that. If, well, you, I, I, if you can justify the price of the tool to do it yourself yeah. versus paying somebody else to do the same thing. Okay, so not even buying, buying an off the shelf in, part. You want versus well then, right. buying the tool to make it yourself. Give right. me an example here. Well, like, right, cause what's the cost of like a prefab floorboard and having somebody weld it in? Let's call it a thousand bucks, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Cut it out, you know, prep everything, weld it, paint it afterwards, seam seal it, whatever. Mm. If you can buy a welder for but that you can. amount, yeah, right. yeah, and an angle grinder or two, and the supplies you need to do it, then you're prepared to do any other floorboard after that point 
from then right. on right. the so same amount you would have spent anyway. So you might as well just yeah. buy the tools and try it yourself. Yeah, so you're basically just setting yourself up for, you know, hey, if I'm going to commit to this, I'm going to do it more than one time. Exactly. But at least yeah. I can. I have the ability to do it Or you have a tool that can do 50 other jobs. Right, time, exactly. So. You know, because, I mean, you can use every tool for at least more than one, like, That's obviously more than one usually how I end up buying tools. I need to do something. Okay, I'm going to find the, the tool that's most universal that'll get right. what I need done and then also have a bunch of uses after that. Yeah, like what, what that's is like the, a what, constant snowball because I do that <laughs> currently is like any tool I don't have because I've it's opened my doors so much previously just like figuring out how to do it myself and getting the equipment to do it that if there's a tool I need to do something better or more efficiently at this point I just buy it. Yeah, yeah, don't even hesitate. Well, you yeah. might as well, right? But it doesn't like, always start. You, that you way. guys are so it does, it's not a Don't start out buying every tool under the sun. You don't right. need to do that. You can get everything done with basic stuff. And right. like, until you have the skill set, the better tool is not going to help you any. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to be able to know how to use it correctly. Right. I mean, to so. put in perspective, I mean, what was it? Three years ago, I don't remember when I OS swapped me out of. Uh, three years. At, at that point, I mean, you guys were in my garage. I didn't have shit. I mean, I had hand drills, I had grinders, I didn't have a workbench. Um, yeah, you were working on the floor, cutting stuff on the floor. Like, yeah, and, and so we've I've done that. Yeah, and it's not fun. It's not I fun, mean, but you can get it done. Yeah. but it's doable. I mean, um, yeah, and like um, the polar opposite end of that spectrum. And at this point, I mean, I've used your um, Rogue Fab bender a couple times for a few little odd jobs, and my plan was. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but you know, uh, by the time I get a truck and everything, maybe turn the E39 into like the full-fledged drift car. I want to build a cage. So, at that point, yeah, I mean, like Kevin mentioned, to pay somebody to build a cage or even get like a prefabbed one that you right. still have to weld together. I mean, we're talking at bare minimum the cost of the bender. Yeah, I mean, so, you, you might as well do the work yourself at that point. I that's mean, that's how I, mean, I justified it. So then available. I ended up purchasing a bender because I plan to do it at least once, you know, and even in that one time that I would have paid somebody yeah. to do it, it would have so, paid so, for itself. So, so what I'm getting from this so far is it is more cost efficient if you plan to do it on your own than it is to pay someone else. I mean, else you might have a hard time, part, yeah. like, convincing that to your wife or girlfriend or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, that's generally true. I mean, there's... But there's a plus side to that, too. If you're, needing, if you're needing to convince them, you can be like, hey, I made you this cool flower pot hanger or something or other. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Look, they're benefiting from it, too. There you go. You yeah, well, I mean, that it. mostly applies to people that want to learn how to do it as well. Yeah. Right. Cause, like, you have to want to do it. You have, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to want it's like people, like, don't, and that's fine. And that's, you know, why shops make money. And it's not for everyone. Right. But if you're interested in figuring out how to do it, or you think that's cool, or you can do it a different way, then yeah, you know, that's the way to go. I mean, if I could save money doing it myself, that's that's. I mean, that's. I feel like that's generally anybody's. You almost always can, yeah. unless you're doing a job one time and one time only. Yeah. Very infrequently does it make sense to to pay somebody else or, you yeah. know. To either borrow a tool or something right. like that if you can, you know. You know, hey, can I borrow your water? Or, hey, can I, right. you know, borrow your grinders or mm-hmm. whatever? Or, what do you recommend for X? You know, I'm working on this project. Like, yeah. what tools should I have? Or, well, you can use basic hand tools. Or, you know, yeah, you got to need some power tools and some other mm-hmm. stuff just to kind of kind of get going. Yeah, well, then, there probably walks on that line of somebody who's willing to either get into this stuff full-time, like they want right. it, not full-time, but as a hobby, I mean, to be able and wants to fabricate things that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, the welder opens up your doors to so many things. Broken bolts, even. The yeah. metal alone yeah. is worth yeah. having a welder. So, yeah. well, on that topic, we should talk about should you buy a MIG or a TIG for your mm. first that, welder? That was Out my next box, question, actually. I, uh, think, I think it depends on material, right? Disagree. Yeah, well, that's, that's fine. The first welder I bought for my own personal use, well, I learned on a MIG first, but I, the first welder I bought was a TIG. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do most tasks that you can do with a MIG with a TIG. Right. Um, You're going as to, as a beginner, on the flip side, to Mike's defense, a lot harder to learn. Like, much yeah. harder to learn, a lot but, less. Uh, but why? Why? That was also going to be my... Run, run, run the differences down to me. Uh, it's like maybe driving a manual a car versus an automatic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, it's a pretty... Yeah, maybe. but like... But more in depth, like... Why is MIG or TIG, why is one more difficult than the other? You know, what, what process is it I taking? won't say that it's any easier to operate a MIG well. The, for the beginner, for somebody who's either not interested in producing a quality product, a pr- quality weld, 
And make works. You can stick some stuff right, you together. Can st- you can yeah. stick metal And for together. the majority of stuff that you need, it'll work. I mean, for, but on that note, you they, can go pick up a flux core welder also, which yeah. honestly is a giant waste of time in my opinion. But I I, I've ran my welder on flux core stuff for 10 years before I switched over to gas. That's I should have fir- switched over day one. As soon as I did, I was like, holy crap, I should have done this sooner. We did yeah, the first I did version everything. of the LS Miata modified subframe on a flux core Harbor Freight welder on go. my garage floor. And so, honestly, like once you got it dialed, it wasn't that bad. No, flux yeah, core like is it's... incredibly strong. Very ugly, but incredibly I mean, it's strong. Realistic. It's just the opposite, like physically, of uh, stick welding. I mean, the flux yeah, is it's just inside out stick welding right. that so... comes out a squirt gun. And I mean, the, pe- that's still a that's not like even out of date yet. Pipeline welders, everything. Oh, yeah. It's all stick still welding flux is core. Incre- incredibly flux versatile core, for. But... You know, anything outside. Yeah. Like a gas, like a MIG, if you're doing anything in not a or garage, it's awful. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Any, any airflow does does not work. Yeah. Shielding gas. Well, yeah, shielding gas is important, right? Because right. you need that to protect right. the material that you're So, I mean, that's just right. obviously an added expense to consider when going, like, full bore into, like, the welding setup. But, yeah. uh, I don't know, to circle back, we need to not get... We're getting into we're the weeds again. The weeds. <laughs> well, I think this is important information. Take. Like, even... You know, we might be running off here, but at the same time, you know, your guys' opinions is important because, like, obviously, each one of you has a different opinion, yeah. right? Like, we just realized... I mean, like, I, I would venture to say, though, that, like, like we talked about the basic tools for getting into fabricating. If that's something that you were genuinely interested in, we talked about the drills, the grinders, the flap discs, the... Um, like a bench vice. I mean, that's a bunch of vice grips. Like all sorts of, you know, just stuff to hold things. Now, right? And then, the then beyond things. that, beyond basic, you know, either whether it be powered or hand tools, the next step, in your opinion, is what? Oh, well, yeah. I don't want to be biased. I want you no, guys no, to say no, it too, no, but no, I 100% agree. agree. It's, it's a, a welder, welder. opens up your doors to anything. You don't have the right size socket. Like, you can make one out of flat stock, which right. I've yeah, totally the done. The tools yeah. I've made at this point is, is right. very high on the list, because who wants to go buy the specialty tool that, you know, you're going to use No, once. of course like, not. Yeah, it, like, I mean, well, I mean just, think about a it. A couple you examples, can... there's like some timing gear stuff, mm-hmm. you know, things like right. that, that. It's just flat stock, essentially, with some holes drilled in it, and maybe well, a little bend. OEMs want 100 what, the, the bucks BMW, The BMW timing wrenches, right? Those are flat stock. Sure, and they're some wrenches together. Right, exactly. Fang clutch. Or yeah, fan, fan, fan clutch, clutch removal yeah. tool. Sorry, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, but I mean, it's welded literally, to a piece of flat it's stock. flat. It's got a hole in it. And you can have zero welding experience and make that day one. Oh, you don't right. even need it's a welder a, for you that. Can you can have just... the worst weld ever, and that would work. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah, to, to make the wrench even or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but like broken bolts, anything that's stripped, even mm-hmm. like you yeah. can fill a it's hole just one and of those yeah. things. Tap it, like you don't even think about in the ways that it pays for itself. Like it's not it's not as easy to justify as like that one, you know, very specific job that you're like, yeah, I could pay somebody else to do it or I can buy the tool. This is like it can just snowballs. It right. does in a good way. Take <laughs> quite a bit of seat time. Yeah. For like if you're constantly driven to make a nice quality weld. Yeah. Meg or TIG takes quite a bit of seat time to mm-hmm. really get it figured out. Yeah. Now difference between a welder and a grinder. Because I feel like you're always going to have to be grinding at some point. That's not always true. Okay. So. Ideally, not. Ideally well, not. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, we started I mean, it depends with, the, on the, with the base tools are the grinder. Right, The, the right. grinder is part of the base tool set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does not, you know, we're not... You can hide a crappy weld with a grinder. That's yeah. for sure. Right. But okay. in a perfect world, yeah, that's a ton of time and a big mess for something that, if you made a nice weld on, yeah. wouldn't be embarrassing. Right. So, you, you, you lay down a nice bead, you just put paint right over top of it. Right, you and you you're not grinding away the structure. Like, yeah, a, a nice, high-quality weld. Right. Like, you shouldn't have to grind. You shouldn't have to remove material. You're only making it weaker. Right. So, sometimes that doesn't always work out. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, yeah, everybody messes up here and there. I'm a, but, I'm a victim. A oh, grinder yeah. and paint. Oh, me man. So, I mean, I ain't. With, the, with the lack of experience that I had... Uh, because we had a flux core welder. Parker just bought a Lincoln Electric one, actually, and we've been kind of messing with that. But we had a flux core from Harbor Freight, mm-hmm. and we were kind of like messing with stuff. Uh, I had some some gun targets that I was some steel pingers that I was re re putting back together. So I put them back together. Whatever, fine. I go and shoot them. Nine millimeters, fine. Forty five, knocked the plate off, and I was like, well, I guess I have to revisit that weld. So, In my experience too, because because I started there too, for yeah. sure. Like I had I used a flux cores, and I. I had re- actually a really bad experience with it for a, a, really until I bought a TIG, got through learning on a TIG, 
and then it was kind of forced back into using the flux core at one point right and after i had all that experience the flu that's when the flux core went a whole lot better and so i will say um for the most part people think flux core especially that you can just weld dirty material and yes. you can't no not true. material and prep even when it's flux core yep. is 100% the key to making a nice weld because yeah, you can do it on a flux core. If you can't, if you can't get the weld to stick, then well, like, yeah, if you're trying to blow through contamination mm -hmm. or any right, yeah. dirt or like, uh, film, like I've seen people go to Home Depot for their steel supply because they're not familiar with either like local larger steel supply Sometimes places. They're scared Sunday to go in there. You have to. Well, that's like, the th they they end up buying galvanized. Right. Galvanized is bad, and bad. it gives you. It's bad. Yeah, that's uh, what it's bad to breathe in, isesn't it? Yeah. Well, that too. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the safety aspect of it, but it, trying to weld to coated metals, even whether it's just oiled, mill scaled, or mm -hmm. galvanized, you're you're gonna have a bad time. No yeah. matter flux core TIG. It doesn't matter how hard you, or how good whatever. you are at welding. No. It's not gonna be. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. So hot rolled steel, I think, is like the. You is the biggest issue for getting into welding too. Yeah. So you buy, you know, flat so, stock so from wherever. So hot rolled steel, HRS. If you ever see that, if you're if you're going to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever to buy your uh, steel stock, HRS has a uh, mill scale on it. That's okay. like the byproduct of the hot rolling process, and that needs to go away to weld. And, okay. and, but I also need it, you know when it's sitting in the store so it doesn't it does, right, right. that's it's, it's, so obviously it's a byproduct we're... that they're not willing to remove because yeah it does it is a risk to the their stock otherwise they have to oil everything they have and that's keep it away i only buy p and o pickled and oiled mm -hmm. and that's right. you know they pickle easier. off the yeah. hot roll and then they oil it and that's it no less prep because yeah. hot roll is some sort of death material that eats grinding wheels or flap discs it's, immediately because <laughs> it's it's a very hard and, and very and it's, it acts as a heat sink especially right. and that's why it's difficult for most hobbyist welders to, to weld to without any prep is because in order to get through it kind of like aluminum you need a shitload of heat yeah um so it's possible to weld to without prep but i mean for everybody else it's like, not worth it it's, it's good practice to get rid of it so, so obviously there's different materials and different you know, so chemical yeah, your treatments material and stuff prep like that and your fitment or what you're trying to make yeah. is the entire key it doesn't yeah. matter what welding machine you're trying to use you can stick weld stuff like it which you can get really nice results with mm -hmm. if you prep it right yeah i mean so, it, it, it's all it's you know it's all about prep work and, and patience patience it's like, and it's like body work too which i am not interested in at all i dislike body work um, but i'm terrible at it i've <laughs> done it here and the there prep. i do not like all it all in the prep yeah uh what would you say is more prep body work or, or oh, body work for yeah. sure i it's can tolerate more, the welding like i can yeah. get through that um because i know that you know that results in a good product at the end right uh but i i've tried the body work stuff and i just it takes so much i mean we're talking days for body yeah. work good prep for a welding job i mean it, it realistically takes you five ten minutes you know uh, it right. depends what you do depends but, on how big it is yeah it's, how big you know, it's not is that much time in the grand scheme of things so we kind of lost the topic of the actual make first take and what yeah what differences there are there so yeah let's okay, let, so we can make, revisit think that. of it like a hot glue gun <laughs> okay pull the trigger, i like where this is going you're using the filler wire is the electrode mm -hmm. to create the heat and you know become the filler material for the weld um, it's a lot more straightforward it's a single-handed operation you kind of just have to pay attention to the puddle and move along you can get in places that are uncomfortable right in other yeah. types of welding work because you only have one trigger to worry about you only have one one nozzle you don't have to feed filler wire in as well right so like someone welding a cage unless you're really experienced with a tape welder you're going to go for the make 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah just yeah. just because it's it's you're not putting as much physical effort into using that or just because it's like a one-handed it's hard to get it like the, one of the biggest challenges with tig welding is being in a position to to properly execute what you need to you do need some space yeah so yeah. well yeah an auto position welder difficult for both but more difficult when it's a two-handed operation mm -hmm. and you have a foot pedal for your yes. average like, I mean, they have the trigger. You can get you can get yeah. the trigger, but that's a learning curve in itself. Right. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have messed with that, no. but those, that's a whole nother ball game in terms of setting up the welder. In terms of you know just all the, all the settings. You know, you have your base amps, your ramp up speed, your peak amps. You have. I feel like we should go over a TIG welder because we just skipped that. No, we'll no, no, we will. We will. <laughs> Still talking about the MIG. So let's, right. Yeah. So we're trying we're, we're explaining the why the MIG was easier in that case, and in in terms of e both just setup. Uh, position 
and I also gaps. I mean, right. yeah, you can fill. You, gaps you want as small a gap as you can, no matter what kind of welding you're doing. Well, but, the smaller the gap, the less likely it is to fail, right? Right. Well, well it's you're not going to blow through both sides and make a hole. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's, that's well, yeah, because it's hot. I mean, obviously, you're working with hot. It metal wants to melt it. away from each yeah. other. The larger the gap is, of course. So, um, so in that respect, TIG wants a much smaller gap than MIG. Right. Um, so when you're building things like cage with a ton of joints and everything, you know, you can be the best fitter in the world to have the, all the perfect uh mm-hmm. you know whole saw dies or what do you call them so yeah, the, the, the blanking on it now um, notcher notcher that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's i've having done some cage work i always strive to get the fitment like tig worthy oh and boy is it tricky. it makes the biggest difference it makes a huge difference so. even just in your mig world it, right. it takes back to the prep again yeah it's that's the same, ba- same back deal. to prep work yeah yep so but there's a lot of pluses very same versatile it's for easy. simplicity i mean ideally everybody would um, have both but there are some downsides also. If you could only buy one. It depends on what you're doing. Yeah, doesn't it? I'm doesn't, Kevin. Uh, if I could only right, right. buy one. <laughs> really, like, if I could only... No, no. I, I, there's That's not an answer. You have to have both eventually. As a, okay, sorry. As a first welder. As a first, I, I'd still stick by the TIG. Yeah. Um, if my first job up, you know, that I was going to tackle was putting a cage in a car, which is a pretty large task for someone as a first welding project <laughs> yeah, yeah. i would buy the mig i would not ride in that car <laughs> yeah. uh no that's yeah I, I think i mean so the other factor there is aluminum yeah that's i, I want to get into that uh, i know you it can depends on like material you can though. get very good results i i mean i'd love a spool gun <laughs> i would really like to try it i haven't yeah i've seen people do it mm-hmm. i've seen what looks like a good result but i don't know if i could execute it without a lot of experience in that area mm-hmm. so. i think that also applies to a tig weld yeah that's true yeah cause well, especially tig welding aluminum is a tricky business i it's guess i just like, started in a weird place because i learned tig welding on aluminum that was like yeah <laughs> the if first... you have the right size material and everything set up right mm-hmm. it is really nice to weld aluminum yeah. yeah i guess that brings up a good point too it's like a mentor like somebody who knows what they're doing to give you advice on like what you're doing right, right. and wrong i mean before I bought my welder, I spent a lot of time on uh, welding web, yeah. and I read through all those forums. I like really enjoyed reading through everybody's just projects. I mean, there's like actually a really big sailboat forum on there. Oh um, boy, yeah. there's all a right. boat which right is, on there. Which is, I don't want to go off on, but all right, Will's going to have that. a sailboat but, here in the next few months. <laughs> hey, you never know. Whatever falls into your lap. Uh, but uh, no, just like watch it, like. Uh, reading through the threads of people's either whether it be homemade tools mm-hmm. or uh, just just around the house projects whether it be you know just this. planters like hangers things like this doesn't stuff. matter what it is and then you know there's a great source for everyone you're voicing their struggles getting advice mm-hmm. from people that have been doing it for years yeah not having stuff. the fear whether or not you know somebody in person that, that is a decent welder or mm-hmm. has experience welding um, having kind of the balls to post your stuff up online in that case and right. look for that feedback is going to make a world of a difference. Yeah. So I feel like it's not it's not an industry or a hobby that is, you know, taken lightly by most people that are well versed in it, right? I mean, obviously people want to learn, right? But, I mean, there's tons of people online all the time asking about their welds or yeah. offering their services to weld even if they're you not. You have to like, be willing yeah. to accept the knowledge. Nobody likes the guy well, who right. put, no, posts up their shit the con- and is, taking, refuses to accept criticism. Right. Taking the constructive criticism and turning there's, it into a better result. There's zero mm-hmm. replacement for spending time behind the right. pedal. Right. Yep. Especially with TIG because it's just, you know, like I said, it's like driving an automatic versus manual. Mm-hmm. TIG, you're going to have a foot pedal. You have your electrode on your torch right. right and you have your filler rod right so you're doing things with three different yeah, three know, different it's appendages. like your clutch your yeah, gas okay. and your brake all, your gas is your foot pedal <laughs> well <laughs> the yeah, clutch they, is i don't know i guess the torch there's a lot more factors to to learn and they you have to learn them all at the same time you have yeah. to learn you know well, amperage it's, you have to earn, earn, you know learn you gotta feed. teach yourself to multitask mm-hmm. and yeah and, so i mean yeah would, but would you say like if, if you had a kid or whatever and they were learning how to drive i mean you rather they learn how to drive manual right off the bat or automatic i mean that's what my dad my dad did that to me and that's what i learned on so i right. would i would hope to follow that same because you know look anybody can drive an automatic car right <laughs> for the most <laughs> part for the, for the most part <laughs> uh but like learning to drive manual uh, is it well it's a it's know, definitely it's, a steeper it's... learning curve to go with the tig but yeah i think it ingrains probably better practices off the bat because yeah. like i said that you I can you can get away 
with, you know, uh, less prep with the MIG and have it work for your needs. It's not right, it's not perfect, but it would work. Right. Um, but TIG really forces you to do that. You learn what each one of the, the factors and the variables does. You know, yeah. what you more know amps why, does, what less amps right. does, you what know the why gap getting does. hotter mm -hmm. makes a difference on what, like if you're trying to weld eighth inch, eighth inch material versus like you know, 060, whatever, mm -hmm. something super thin, you need less heat. Okay. Right. Well, you're definitely going to understand that when you go to push the pedal on the TIG and you say, oops, <laughs> yeah. right well, well, it. Hold through it. Yeah. Or yeah. why won't this thing melt? Like, I, it's not enough amps. You need more You need more heat. Yeah. So, And it kind of gives you the same, or a better understanding of the, the, the way to get a good weld with the MIG. So you know, oh, hey, I need more heat or I need more filler to cool things down or right. whatever it is. So my, yeah, my first welder was an ACDC TIG off the bat didn't have a big mm -hmm. and, and that's like I said because I did all the research I knew how much okay I shouldn't say that there's more capability with the TIG because it depends on what you're working on you know if you're never getting into you know aluminum or if you're never getting into you know it, it depends on the project but I, I knew the capability of it and I knew that it was going to be a steep learning curve and that kind of intrigued me even more I like the challenge and right. so that was the first welder and i will say that i feel like i am still worse at mig than i am at tick <laughs> see i still more. completely disagree with both of you guys i mean all your things that you're saying are valid and tig teaches you great lessons and all that stuff mm -hmm. but i think it's too many variables out of the box to be figuring out it's a lot once. oh it's hard yeah for yeah, sure it's, it's hard and it's more difficult I mean, but like so i got so would you say maybe before you get too deep into it with a mentor and with somebody who's willing to accept feedback that maybe a tig Maybe yeah, better, that, that that's can be a better choice. I With, still disagree. It depends on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because like that's fair. the speed of a weld, you mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. TIG weld at the rate you can MIG weld. Right. Yeah. So you're gonna spend a week welding something you could have done in a day and a half. Mm -hmm. Right. D you know, depends what you're making. Right. Um, you know, the versatility of it. Like, so you don't always need that level of perfection in the control over the the puddle of the weld. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I got my MIG welder that's on top of my TIG welder right now. In his sophomore year of high school, I asked for it and for like Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I've had it what, 17 years now, and it was flex cord. My dad didn't know how to weld. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to put stuff together. Yeah, it seemed like together, all right. I want to sure. like I was playing with like junk tractors and go karts and stuff. I'm like I want to try to stick stuff together because that seems to be my holdup for making mm -hmm. stuff cool. And I learned some very valuable lessons on what breaks. Like, just with dumb stuff like that and crashing things and whatever and, like, prep. Yeah. But the ability to just kind of belligerently stick stuff together with a MIG mm -hmm. was very valuable yeah. for me learning. It's pretty undeniably easy and to do and accessible to most people. So, right. unless and you have someone there, eventually the, the plan really is you need both. Right. You need There's, both. But, like, the, the variables of figuring it out. So you've got your heat and your wire speed. Mm -hmm. So you've got the amount of material you're putting in and how hot you're making it. And that right. is a nice, simple thing to understand how to move a weld puddle. Mm -hmm. So trying to do that, like you said, with three different appendages semi-coordinatedly is <laughs> a lot harder. Like, yeah. I think just yeah. being able to concentrate right. with two hands on one thing, trying to focus on the puddle. And I would say you're restricted to, off the bat, if you're TIG welding, to being in position all the time. Yes. That's not even a consideration. To learn how to weld, everything has to be in position to really understand what's happening. Right. Yeah. So you just don't plan on welding upside down underneath your car right. with a TIG it welder off the bat. every single variable for both MIG and TIG. Yeah. Just upside down versus yeah. right side up. So. And the amount of burns. But you can get away with more off the bat as a beginner learner on a MIG. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's so way so more forgiving. So basically... Especially kind of summarize everything. What you're doing right now yeah. is playing with rusty sheet metal. Yeah. I think MIG is the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no way I'm going yeah. near that with the TIG. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thin, uh, thin metal, you know. Rusty, having just spent the last position, month and a half of that, trying yeah. working on TIG welding sheet metal mm -hmm. on the dopey drift car. Yeah. Wow, Which, by hard. the way, looks pretty good. It's I, don't, okay. I don't think anybody, any of our viewers, really know what's happening with that yet. So we're just gonna hush about that. But you'll see it at some point. Yeah, but it's been a learning curve, and I've been welding for a, 
okay amount of time. Like I'm, I feel like I can most of the time get a respectable weld. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of times where I get a shitty weld still. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's one of those things that's been a great lesson in you still have no idea what you're doing. Right. <laughs> like. <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is, you know, it's good to start somewhere, right? Regardless of you know whether you want to get Being, into it or not, the, like getting into it and just doing it and yeah. like spending the time yeah. whatever makes it easier to get you out there figuring right. it out is more valuable than like kind of waiting around for the perfect right. scenario yeah and it's, I think it's it, all it's the effort and, and the drive to want to actually right. do if you, it if you have that if you have the desire to make something yourself be right. proud of it regardless of the outcome and invest some time into learning right um yeah i think it comes back to being able to even just justify the cost of the tool and and whatever scenario that you're in if you can buy the part or buy the tool yeah i mean of course we're all going to say buy the tool but you know that only makes sense if you if you want to do that yeah right so well uh what else do you guys have any uh just any other general things you want to talk about for the last uh i think we got 10 minutes here any anything special going on or any any oddball projects that aren't necessarily related to fabricating that you guys are working on or you know, obviously we have the, the scooters here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, one, when it comes to project management, we'll get into how much my life is in shambles in terms of <laughs> functionality of vehicles right now. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, you know, just to kind of wrap up fabrication, like it's, if you have any interest in it and you think it's something that would open up doors for you, don't hesitate. Yeah. Just get and out there and do it's it. A, yeah, it's a, I feel like it's me being someone with very little experience. Like, it's definitely something that is. It seems cool to do. Well, let's do this. Right. What What is like? What has deterred you from it? And what is still like an apprehension you have? I think it's just. Of... It was never really. I never really had to do it before, right? So like, I could usually make do with what I had, right? I could. I guess technically, I could just fabricate things with tools here and there, and you know, mm-hmm. bolts and drills and stuff like that. So. It was never really a, I need to stick that's, this piece of metal. Right, yeah. right. So it was never a, in, in a, I guess, a welding aspect. It was never a, I need to stick this to this. Right. I found other ways to do it. Um, so it hasn't really been a deterrent. It just hasn't really been something that I've had to necessarily do. So I'm not. I know. guess we also have a slightly different perspective, too, because it's funny when, when, as soon as you possess that knowledge and the ability or the to- or have the tools to do certain things, like, the world of possibilities just becomes, you know, that much well, wider. That's, that's looking at pro, you know, it comes back to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and finding things that are broken and be like, oh, that's an excellent deal, and I can just yeah, right, blast can this back that, yeah. together with a welder, like, and you're ready to rip. Yeah, like, right. It that takes is, it takes some of your labor, and that's it. Well, that that's you know? what I mean. Like, I when when uh, Parker and I were working on his EZ30, uh, I think that was the biggest thing that opened up for me. It's just it's like look how easily with a little bit of time and a little, little bit of effort and obviously some measurements and like you know fuck it up here and there you know you can do something on your own without having to pay an exorbitant amount of money to have mm-hmm. somebody else do it or you know something like yeah, that. something that is considered difficult you're like oh right that wasn't that bad right and, and i Just think that's that's like... the that's the biggest deterrent for most people is like well i can't do that or it's like people don't you know they've, they've never experienced it before because i was like that before i you know even got into this and i was like you know, that's something I'd like to do, but it's just like, where do I even start? There's right. Well, you can't think that far ahead. I mean, you right. can't do say what Mike did, and when your uh, Moto Four stripped out the rear end gears, and just expect to be able to take up and grind <laughs> down like new bevel gears. Right. Uh, well, that's yeah. So that's a whole nother snowball topic. Of this is the ability to do sketchy things right safely <laughs> right because yeah. realistically i mean it. the common person the average person's solution to that would have been buy a new rear end for right. four or five hundred bucks or right exactly those things go for yeah and re- in reality i mean you're not any further behind whether that works or doesn't i mean if right. it works that's, that's fantastic the thing. because i have the tools to do it so just to bring everyone up to speed the tiny moto fours <laughs> have a bit of a weak link only because there was no serviceable aspect to the ring gear on the back so it's right. a, you know a ring and pinion set up because it's shaft drive and they like to blow out bearings because no one's touched it since the 80s mm-hmm. <laughs> and then rip all the teeth <laughs> off the ring gear which is part of the axle there's also nowhere to like put any oil in it's just filled right there's grease. no access factory, to it, originally yeah. grease which is now sand or something yeah which is yeah. now just the yeah just yeah. caked on goo in there but water. so mine blew up because 
I'm an adult on a child's <laughs> ATV riding wheelies everywhere. Yeah. Makes perfect sense that right. I blew it up. But for me, because I have a TIG and I have the ability to weld this stuff, it was worth the risk to me to spend, you know, what I blew it apart in like 45 minutes, mm -hmm. had it on the bench, maybe spent another hour. TIG Identified welding. the problem. <laughs> yeah, found the problem. Yeah. TIG welded the little teeth back up, built it up with a nice weld, and then ground them out until like followed a similar contact patch. Mm -hmm. And that was a year and a half ago, and it's still working fine. Because yeah. rather than spend 400 bucks on something, maybe someday I'll have to replace. Right. I've gotten another year and a half out of it. At right, and if it breaks least. again, you just make another one. Right, I can right, either so. make another one or bite or the Or you had to replace it anyways. You know? right, yeah. So really, you were no further behind by giving it a shot. And that's, again, I think a pretty drastic example. I mean... It's that's... a drastic example. And granted, this is not like, you know, you just bought a welder try to weld teeth yeah, that's back not on what gear. I'm saying. This is not an advisable <laughs> thing. Right, yeah. But, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't like, hurt to try. Right. Like, well, I mean, what, even it's if you want to grab some sheet metal or, or, you know, some, from some flat stock or whatever and just, you know, cut it apart Stick and try to put it back together. together. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's I mean, that's what we started doing and, you know, yeah. I enjoyed doing it and obviously there's a process to it and hand movements are important and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 a, I completely understand now why people are why people fabricate the way they do because it makes I feel like it's, this is it's turning cost. into like a motivational series we should yeah. just be like yes you can do it well, I, you yeah, right it around. Yeah. yeah just cut it in half so <laughs> swap the engine do it <laughs> that note, there's like the other side of things which is much more advanced machining and fabrication. oh yeah, yeah. so yeah. we can talk about mill slates cnc programming like yeah i, I wanted tables. to get the cnc sure. and um, you know yeah, yeah the can... options are limitless. Once you know how to make stuff, you realize everything is made somehow. And once you figure out how to do a couple things, you're not far off of learning how to make anything you want. Right. But, yeah, but everything gets more expensive from here on out. Like, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, so, the steps so, so, become <laughs> bigger as you move on. General it? in garage or in shop fabricating mm -hmm. is pretty accessible to most everyone if you yeah. if you try hard enough, yeah, right? right? If, if you, you care get... about doing it. Uh, and Kevin was saying stuff about CNC and obviously other things. That is, you know. Obviously, you need machines to do CNC work to a point. You um, can avoid it for the most part. It's one of those things. If you have the capability or the access to do this stuff, you're going to do it. You're going to have some crazy, awesome, unique stuff that's right. going to have amazing, you know, finished product quality. Right. But, I mean, you don't need it. You don't right. need it. You, you can make do with you know, yeah. stuff in your garage mm -hmm. or with the enough effort. The most important machine, enough. once you get into that realm, is a lathe. Yeah. yeah. Making things round is hard. Yeah, very. Yeah, that that's like the next big thing. Yeah. Well, someday, someday. Well, I, I was there, and then I moved here, and that's a big, it, that's a big space problem. One. Yeah, right there. I mean, well, what? Because they're, that's they're I mean, they're huge. Well, you there's can get desktop now. ones. I like yeah. the, I like the bench top ones. Those yeah. are. Appealing. You can do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I that's a. Trigger. It is tricky because you know, Will and I are both renting at the moment. And right. <laughs> I was renting before when I had my two thousand pound lathe that was eight feet long and it's a pain and it wasn't worth hanging out here right but yeah that's boy, not was one of the things useful. that i will purchase until i have the you space are, you are the person i needed to buy a lathe from <laughs> yes. yeah yes yeah. absolutely yeah. right someday we'll see well yep. uh what else you guys got anything hmm. no? i think that's a pretty good ending point yeah we're, uh, otherwise we're just going to snowball into some yeah. But the, the snowballing is what people want to hear. That's the oh, good boy, stuff. we could talk boy, for a long time. <laughs> you mean to tell me they stuck around this long? Everything. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. Hey, you know, you never know. I think this is one of the times we've stayed on task like remotely well. Yeah. Because it's well, there's really so much. Easy. It's it's. A, I mean, in comparison to some of the things that we've talked about, I mean, welding in particular. I mean, there's just so there's so much to talk about. Like we right. didn't touch on the half of it. No. Well, so. We just touched on the basics of it, but we at least and branch off into super far away right but but all right uh if that's all we have uh thanks for listening guys uh we will update you with the new episode uh, at some point here um i'm sure next all tuesday. the guys next, next every tuesday, tuesday. Uh, yeah every tuesday i'm yeah. sure all you guys will be maybe mike will be breaking less things uh, no or, absolutely no or, i have uh, no intentions of doing that. you know i don't have a problem with all my stuff being broken it's <laughs> just part of the the hustle of playing with like nine yeah. projects at once yeah. so so to recap you can do it if you put enough effort into it with you know the tools that are fairly uh you know yeah. ex inexpensive if you want to do it right? if you want to do it you can if you want it bad enough you right. can get it done without all the fancy stuff right. and very well mm -hmm. project management is important 
That's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and just have, you against know, it if you can. <laughs> and the biggest thing is like, I guess don't don't be afraid to ask other people the yeah, you know yeah. their opinions because there's always someone out there that knows more. Right. So yep. So accept the feedback and figure it out. Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, like us, like everyone said, two episodes on Tuesday, mm-hmm. right? And uh, um, I will probably be back. If you guys like me or not, it doesn't be. really matter to me. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you're getting so, to me for the way, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more uh, shenanigans and updates on you know all the CAD cars Life. and, and yeah. you know just random projects and yeah. mini motos and all kinds of other stuff. And you know, if you're interested, don't feel free to or, uh, feel free to shoot us an email or something or what do we want to talk about? Longest sign off. I don't know what you, what, what you want me to <laughs> do here. Just like I came by. All right, guys. Came by. That was it. Catch Enjoy. <laughs>